The average human spends two hours a night dreaming. That means that six years of your life are gonna be spent in La La Land. I'm Nick, welcome to All Our Questions, where I search the internet for questions that we all want answers to, and I answer them. Today's question is, why do we dream? We're gonna find out, and we're starting right now. When we first go to sleep, we begin a cycle that repeats itself every 90 minutes and features different stages of sleep. We can dream during any part of the sleep cycle, but most dreams occur during REM sleep. And REM, just in case you don't know, stands for rapid eye movement. Scientists who studied the brain waves of sleeping subjects discovered that our brain activity when we're in REM sleep is similar to the brain activity when we're awake. This explains why subjects who were woken up during the REM sleep cycle remembered more vivid dreams and they remembered their dreams in more detail. During a full eight hour sleep cycle, we enter REM sleep between four and six times. And as the night goes on, we spend more and more time in the 90 minute cycle in REM sleep. And our most vivid dreams are most likely to occur during the final hours of sleep. When we enter REM sleep, our heart rate goes up, our breathing becomes faster, and we get the twitching and the eye movements that you've seen in people that are dreaming. Scientists haven't been able to pinpoint a single part of our brain that controls dreams. And in fact, it may actually involve every single part of our brain working together. What we do know is that the neurotransmitter serotonin is completely suppressed when we're in REM sleep, but during other parts of the sleep cycle, it actually gets released. This suggests that there's a mechanism that forces us to have dreams, which implies that they're not just a random occurrence. Now, when we begin to actually dream, the prefrontal cortex, which is the part of the brain responsible for logic, it becomes mostly inactive. This is why we're able to see and interact with crazy things in our dreams that we know are too insane to actually ever happen in the real world. For example, you've probably had the dream, let me know in the comments if you have or not, to where you're walking along to your destination, but instead you're actually taking these big long leaps and flying through the air with every single step that you take. Not very realistic, however, you don't seem to care in your dream, it seems real, which means that your prefrontal cortex is shut down because it's not processing that logically. The actual function that dreaming serves for our brains and our bodies is still not completely understood, but there are some compelling theories that try to explain why we dream. One of the more popular theories regarding dreams was established in the early 1900s by Sigmund Freud, who suggested that our dreams are a representation of our unconscious desires. He thought that the subconscious instincts that drive us are formed from the experiences that we have as a child. And if you're a child, you're having these experiences right now. So remember this and eat your vegetables. According to him, we repress these desires in our everyday lives and we only become aware of them when we dream. Freud also thought that there are two different components to every dream, manifest content and latent content. Manifest content is the actual images, objects, and thoughts that we have when we're dreaming. Latent content is the actual meaning behind the dream. And I'm sure that you've seen books or videos on dream interpretation. Well, dream interpretation actually originates from Sigmund Freud's theories. However, not everyone agrees with Floyd. Two scientists, J. Allen Hobson and Robert McClarely, proposed the activation synthesis model of dreaming back in the 1970s. This theory states that when we go into REM sleep, the circuits of the brain that are responsible for emotions and memory, also known as the limbic system, becomes active. The brain reacts to signals firing in this part of the brain and tries to find meaning behind them. They think that this is why we dream. And yet another theory is to tie dreaming into the purpose of sleep, which they think is to process all of the information that we've experienced throughout the day. And of course, there's the theory that our dreams mean nothing at all and that they serve no real purpose and that they're just random occurrences in our brain. This suggestion, however, is disputed because all mammals dream, some birds dream, but less complex life forms like fish do not. According to Darwin's theories, the idea that mammals dream, some birds dream, and fish and insects do not shows that we evolved the ability to dream, which means that there's some type of benefit of some kind to our bodies or to our minds. Although I'm sad to inform you that there is no definitive answer as to why we dream, there is a general consensus that dreams do play an important role in our lives. That role just has yet to be fully determined but you know, I'm sure science will figure it out one of these days. If you're not already subscribed, make sure to hit the subscribe button somewhere on this page so you can get more answers to all our questions. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.